Hey, everybody. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Hemings Hot Rod Barbecue Podcast. Back with me again, Mr. Ryan Douthat of Driving Sports TV. And today we are talking about the brand new 2024 Toyota Land Cruiser. Now, oh, yeah. this, if y'all are Land Cruiser people out there, I will say this. Reinventing the Land Cruiser, that is one of the most iconic, uh, well-known names mm-hmm. in off-roading for the last, I don't know, 50-plus years, right? Yeah, 70, an, 70, 70 years. 70 years. It is, yeah. an, it, it is an icon in off-roading, and it, it is known for reliability, for durability, for longevity, mm-hmm. Um, Ryan was able to kind of check out the new one that's coming out in 2024. 20, He's going to throw us some yep. information on it. Um, yep. but this is, this is a big meatball to reinvent, man. This is huge. So it Ryan, is. tell me, I mean, I saw the photos. Of, I know there are three models. I know that mm-hmm. they're, you know, they're going to start in the mid 50 K range and go up yep. from there, but, but walk us through it, man. So what is, what sure. is this thing? Give us some. So Toyota had this big event at the, um, in Salt Lake City, there's actually a Land Cruiser Museum where they have every generation of Land Cruiser, which honestly, like if you're going to be reinventing, yeah, if you're going to be reinventing a a, a nameplate as well-known and beloved as the Land Cruiser, what a better place to do it. So when they say, you know, like these headlights, you know, harken back to the 70s series or whatever, they're like right there. And you're like, oh yeah, I see that. So what they've done is they've taken a lot of retro inspiration and put it into a very modern package, which is cool. You know, sometimes going retro, uh, think, you know, for Thunderbird, not so great. Um, but uh, I mean, they did it with the FJ. They did it with the FJ. Um, the FJ had some mechanical issues in terms of like, you know, the back seats were super tiny. Yeah. The cabin was really cramped. So, you know, it, it, it had some like misses as far as the yeah. market goes, but still, you know, you, some of those people who own those FJs, uh, you know, they'll be dead before they get rid of those things. You right. know, their grandkids right. will be having to like deal with those right. later uh, <laughs> because that's not leaving the family. Right. Uh, but the new vehicle, so Toyota does this thing where they do a lot of chassis sharing and they also do a lot of powertrain sharing. And it's really interesting to see how they're segmenting all these vehicles because of course, you know, Toyota is kind of this dual personality company. You have all their street boring stuff, um, right. you know, most which has actually gotten more exciting in the last few yeah. years. But if you go back several years, it used to be like, oh, Camrys, yeah, minivans, yeah, yeah. that's right. Toyota. But the fact is, they've always had this other side of the business that was this is trucks, the dirty side, body on frame, you know, basically some of the most beloved, reliable, durable um, off-road vehicles on the planet. Ever. You know, yeah. um, I have a friend who does um, uh, emergency work around the world. Like he flies into like Somalia after, you know, a, a famine or he goes to like yeah. massive earth- earthquake in Taiwan. He'll be there on the scene. And his favorite vehicle is a land cruiser. Like yeah. that's in, in, in here back home. He drives a Tundra. Hey, Matt. Yeah, we're talking about you. Uh, anyway, the... Um, The Land Cruiser is mostly known because not only is it capable, because you can buy a lot of capable vehicles. You can buy a Wrangler, you can buy a a Land Rover, Sure, but they're known for being reliable, which those other vehicles, not so much. So when you have a completely reworked vehicle, you're going to, you know, be worried a little bit about reliability. A little, yeah, especially because these are all hybrids now, you know, and that adds to mechanical capability. But I will say, if anybody does a hybrid, you got to kind of trust Toyota because they've been doing Priuses since, but, what, I, I, 30 yeah. years now? Yeah. <laughs> this is so not let, new technology for them. Let, let me ask you this, because when, when you talk about that and you talk about that reliable, like I have buddies that, you know, they've got the, the Land Cruisers and they've got the Lexus version that, you know, the, yeah. the, 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 the GLs. The LX. Oh, the, G, like, the GX is the small one based on the Prado, and which we'll talk more about, about that yeah. in a little bit. And then the LX is based on the bigger full-size Land Cruiser. Gotcha. So, like, I, I've got a buddy, a really dear friend of mine, isn't it, Todd. You know, he bought mm-hmm. one brand new in, like, 98. Oh, and he yeah. Go, he, he's like, Mike, <laughs> he goes, and it's the V8. And mm-hmm. uh, he goes, we bought it brand new. He goes, there is not a body panel that doesn't have a ding or a dent or something on it. It has 200 and... I don't know, 260, 270, 80, 300,000 miles. Just and getting go, broken in. <laughs> and that's what he said. And yeah. and I said, well, how, you know, because I always ask him, because it makes me giggle. Like, does he still have it? He goes, 
He goes, we'll never get rid of it, man. He goes, I'm going to yeah. have it completely redone and repainted. And it's one of those cars that my, our buddy, Vin, you know, Vinny Russo, Vinny has, oh, one, yeah, yeah. you know, Vinny's got the, the Lexus. And he was like, Mike, it just, he's like, when I bought it, I bought it with like 150,000 miles on it because like, who cares? Like it'll go for another 200,000 miles. Yeah. But you have the, you have the iconic straight six that they put in. Then you mm-hmm. have the V8s mm-hmm. with these turbo fours. And to your point, if anybody's going to do a hybrid version, it's going to be Toyota. But mm-hmm. do you think that the Land Cruiser faithful are going to go? Eh. It's going to be a tough pill because, yeah, the Land Cruiser has always been, you know, for the most part. I, I, there's probably some exceptions out there, but it, it, it was born as an inline six. Yeah. Uh, and then it went into a V8. And like, that's kind of what you expect. Yeah. Um, even the small watered down, watered down version of the, the, the smaller Land Cruiser that we got here in the US, the Forerunner, is yeah. also has always had a six. So yeah. I think it's always, yeah, and you can get it up with a V8 yeah. at one point. But, you know, it's it, uh, the, the thing that people have to understand and having driven off-road a number of these hybrid systems that Toyota makes now, especially with the new generation of vehicles, that electric assist on the low end is brilliant because you get 100% of torque at zero RPM. When you're off-roading, right. that's what you want. Right. So I don't care if it's a V8, even though you get a lot of low-end power with V8, you still have to wind that motor up a little bit. But with electric, right. it's just instant. Uh, and also, it's very quiet. It gives them the capability to, to kind of do more things with the powertrain in terms of tuning it for different conditions. Yeah. So it's just, it's a win-win in my opinion. Now, I have not driven this new Land Cruiser yet. So this is all speculation based on other powertrains I've driven. But I've driven the sure. new Tundra. Um, the new Tundra. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ones again. I mean, right. I've seen the new Tacoma. <laughs> I've seen the new, they, like, oh, man, Toyota's been rolling out so many new products that nobody's driven yet. I've seen the new Tacoma. Uh, I've seen the new GX from Lexus. I've now seen the new Land Cruiser. Haven't driven any of them. Nobody's driven any of them because they've just right. been show models that they've given us. All of these will start production early next year. Um, right. And the Land Cruisers aren't getting in people's hands till probably April or so. Um, right. But anyway, so I think that it's, you know, the one thing that I like is that they have enough touches for the Land Cruiser faithful to be like, yeah, I like that. You know, that's, that's something that I've always wanted in my vehicle. Now, there are a few yeah. misses here as far as land cruiser faithful. You don't have the clamshell trunk. So I, I think one thing I need to define here is for people who don't know, there's been two land cruisers internationally. You have the full-size land right. cruiser, and then yep. you have the smaller mid-size Prado. Now, in historically, the U.S. Prados have been the forerunner. Um, although it's actually quite different than the International Prado, but it's kind of based on that architecture. Uh, and then you have the Lexus GX, which is basically a rebadged Prado. Uh, the okay. Prados always have a swing out rear gate. They have a usually a tire mounted on the back and you pull yeah. it sideways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The full-size Land Cruiser has a clamshell. So you have basically a gate and they both open up so you can sit on that lower lip. Tailgate, man. Really greatest cool. thing ever. I love tailgates. It's great. It's a tailgate and a lid. So you're getting the protection, yeah. but you're getting the extension. Neither of those are on this new vehicle. And the new vehicle is based on the global Prado now. So this is where it becomes complicated for Land Cruiser Faithful. Yeah. You know, as a presenter, we say, this is the new Land Cruiser. Right. And the Faithful say, no, that's not Land Cruiser. That's a Land Cruiser Prado. And it's like, well, yes, but in the U.S., <laughs> they're yeah. calling it a Land Cruiser. And if we want the big Land Cruiser, the only one we can get is the Lexus GX, which looks like a Cylon, you know, from Battlestar Galactica. Oh, yeah. That's like, like, oh, totally. Big yeah, yeah, yeah. rid face. And yeah, it's not a good. Yeah. And it's, it's not, not a good, good overhang. It's just yeah. it's. <sighs> now, on the other hand, when the 200. So uh, the previous generation Land Cruiser was the 200 series. The new one is the 300 series globally. The 200 series that we had here was very close to the global one, but we could only get it here fully loaded, which meant $90,000 for an interior that was designed 20 years ago. And that was, oh, it was was painful to swallow. It's like, love the Land Cruiser, but oh. So now we get a fully modern interior. Uh, which is great surround view camera systems modern infotainment um, yeah actually a note on that surround view camera systems you only get that in the mid and upper trims the base trim only has a rear view camera which i think is so, a bit of a miss 
Well, let, let me ask you this. So going yeah. back to kind of the tailgate and certain features that people have come to mm-hmm. love, right? Like, you know, a drop down tailgate, a fold down tailgate. I have that in two of my vehicles. My old Wagoneer has one. And my Bronco yeah. has one. Yeah. It is my favorite SUV feature. I absolutely, yeah. I, per- perfect example, like this past weekend, we went out. My, one of my favorite things to do is to open the rear, t- you know, swing the tire out, drop the tailgate, sit there wherever I am. You use it as a bench. You use it as a platform. You use it as a desk. You, it is the most mm-hmm. useful thing ever. Yeah. Why? Why do you think they did away with it? Because I they think- are... I think it's for cost and for mechanical complicate, complication. Well, the, so the two go hand in hand. If you make it more complicated, it becomes more expensive. Sure, that lower course. lip always was multiple pieces. Um, and it had this like slipping thing on front to keep the, right. to keep the flat so you didn't have a yeah. gap. Um, and personally, I always thought it was a little on the fragile side, but I've never owned one long term. So I don't know if it was right. fragile. But like the new one, now you have a, a bumper extended bumper lip underneath it. So if you need to like climb up onto the back, even with the gate closed, you can step onto this yeah. this bumper lip and and get up to the back of the vehicle. So there are some smaller benefits, but I right. I, I think the clamshell shell. I would have loved to have seen the clamshell still. Yeah. Now that said, we do get a flip up rear window, so you can access the back even if you have a bike attached. So is it going to be a, an uh, like it, a no, swing out door? Up. It is a lift up. Okay. It is a lift up, which I actually like because if you're putting skis on or something, you want to have that shelter of a. Oh, there's, a, there's no question. Pull up. Yeah. I think the swing are people like it in the Prado because it's always been that way, but yeah, I always thought it was stupid. I, no, I just, listen, I just, I, I, swing outs. Uh, no, the, the lift up canopy is great. And the yeah. fact that you can now open the rear window again. I mean, if you mm-hmm. look at a lot of newer SUVs, they, they simply don't have that feature anymore. No, no. And, and the best is, thing up. The best thing about it is if you're on an incline and you need to get into something in the back and you open up the whole gate, all the stuff in your back is going to stay in out. there. That's right. Yeah. So right. the gas, it stays in. Also, if you have a bicycle or some other large yeah. object attached to the back of the bike and you can't put the gate up, you can always put the, the glass right. up and still get into the back. So that's good. Um, it is funny, though, because globally, this Prado uh, has three rows of seating available. In the U.S., yeah. the Land Cruiser is only going to have two rows of seating. If you want three rows, they're going to have you move into the uh, Grand Highlander or into the Sequoia, which kind of makes sense. That's fine. Uh, yeah. Bigger vehicles for three rows yeah. of people. But the funny thing is they still have the cup holders in those um, in the third the row as if yeah. somebody was sitting there. But there, there's no there's nobody sitting. There. <laughs> well, so let, let me ask you this. So now, you know, mm-hmm. we're talking about the the powertrain. It's a turbo inline four. Right. Yeah. With a hybrid assist. Mm-hmm. Uh, electric motor you you said the uh, power was 326 and 465 pound feet of torque right yeah which is pretty that's that's impressive that's stout yeah right but this is not a plug-in correct this is a hybrid correct. system okay straight hybrid system toyota is not um their electrification is very conservative and i think for this type of product you know in the u.s Guys like you and me who deal with cars all the time yeah. understand the nuances and the the very detailed all the different variations of electrification, you know, plug-in hybrid makes sense. But for yeah. the rest of the U.S., they have no idea what the heck it is. People who even own like the Wrangler 4XEs that have yeah. a plug-in, they don't plug don't it use in. it. They, they don't, they don't know. Yeah, they're right. like, I, the salesperson never told me what this is, but uh, it's a yeah. hybrid. Yay. And they drive it like yeah. a hybrid. So I think that's actually okay. I think it would add extra costs that's unnecessary on this type of vehicle. Also, if you're like based on my audience, I can yeah. tell you that they don't want to plug in. They they just want, they would rather have a V8, honestly. Uh, but yeah. doing a V8 in 2023, that's just not going to fly uh, with yeah. um, economy that we need. And I did see a rumor that economy is going to be 27 MPGs average on this one, but I haven't seen anything okay. official on that yet. So uh, okay. Fingers crossed, I guess. <laughs> I want to go to the reliability standpoint because I know people that have had these things all over the planet, right? When, yeah. when I was in Dubai years ago, literally all had over one. The planet. Yeah. And these things are, these are not trucks that are, that, that are not babied. Mm-mm. No, they are right? abused. The, the, these are trucks that are abused, that are modified, that are really mm-hmm. kind of beat on. But one of the biggest things was that they are so reliable, but the fact is, if something did break, you mm-hmm. could essentially fix it on the trail. You could, and yeah. that 
with a hybrid powertrain is one of the things that is a concern. That's, Do you think that's going to be a big kind of bonus? That is or? absolutely a concern and kind of the reason why they still sell the Land Cruiser 70 series in countries like Australia. That's actually yeah. the rugged, I mean, that's the 40 year old version of the Land Cruiser. And it literally still, is a 40 year old truck. Literally, but they up, yeah. they actually updated the interior and some yeah, of the uh, elements <laughs> yesterday. I mean, like, I love it. You know, it's it's kind of like the Volkswagen bug. You know, it was discontinued in the U.S. like 40 years before it actually stopped production yeah. in the rest of the world. Same thing. You have localized people that need that kind of stuff. And like do, in do Australia, you think they that's would sell a huge that? country. You can't find do, a mechanic. <laughs> if if you had that vehicle here, yeah. you think it would sell? I think if they made it, brought it here, they could easily sell it as a hundred thousand. You know, put a brilliant interior stupid price tag on that it. one as the g-wagon competitor and i think that would you know because there's always those guys who are like i want something un uncommon dead reliable yeah historic but yeah. brand new <laughs> well isn't that the best one i remember when porsche started doing that back with the models where it was like when the rs's first came out and they were like all right here's what you're gonna get or here's what you're not gonna get yeah. We're not going to give you AC. We're going to give you a plexiglass window. And we're charging you more. <laughs> and we're charging you another $60,000. People are like, that sounds great. I want yeah, that. Sign me up. And you can't make <laughs> yeah. enough of them. <laughs> like that, that to me is amazing. Yeah. But well, so I, I'll talk, tell you, it let, sounds go ahead. Uh, yeah, it's uh, we need to talk about the three trims because they're making three yes. trims of this yes, vehicle yes, yes. at launch. So you have the 1958 edition, which is the first mm -hmm. year that the Land Cruiser was sold in the US. Yep. Um, you then have the Land Cruiser with no additional name. It's just Land Cruiser. Land Cruiser, trim. yeah. And then you have the first edition, which they're going to make 5,000 of uh, for the North American market. Yeah. And those are literally the first 5,000 off the production line. So with the 1958, right. you get the retro style headlights, which are round. Uh, you also get crawl control, rear locking diff. Oh, actually, all of them have a rear locking diff and a full-time four-wheel drive with a center locking torsen uh, diff. So that's okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, that's that's like proper hardware. So you could get the 1958 and, and be fine off road. Oh yeah, yeah. The um, but it comes with cloth seats, smaller digital displays. I like that. I, it's good. Yeah, uh, manual controls. Uh, the it the I have to say the gauge cluster looks a little funny, and the bezel because they have the big bezel but a small touchscreen in it. It's a little like yeah. an after. Is it an analog kind of. or is it a digital cluster? Everything's digital. Everything's <laughs> digital okay. in it, both the gauge cluster as well as the touchscreen. Obviously, gotcha. Um. But then when you, it's an eight inch on that one. But then when you move to the mid trim, you get the 12 inch infotainment system, which is nice widescreen, but it's not like the 14 inch in the GX. Yeah. I, and that 14 is just way too big. It's too I big. Don't like it. Yeah. Too big. Um, but what you get is you also get the multi terrain select system, which is their advanced uh, software, which for brake vectoring and whatnot, which is pretty cool. Uh, and you also get fog lights and a surround view camera system. And then a nice. soft tax interior. So it's kind of a nice okay. interior and some more body colored panels. Yeah. And then when you go up to the first edition, um, you're going to get uh, all of that plus. So it's basically based on the mid range trim, but you get the retro style headlights. So they kind gotcha. of you know, throw back to 58, yeah. but you get a roof rack, roof rails, um, front skid plate. And I think it even has, yeah, it has rock rails. That's right. But if you, if so, you just buy the 58, the base 58 mm -hmm. model, the, mm -hmm. I mean, the aftermarket's going to jump all over. Absolutely. Yeah, we, so you're going to be goes, able to get everything. Now, the funny thing is I was talking to Toyota and they're like, yeah, we didn't put good all-terrain tires on the on any of these, basically, but especially not the 1958 because A, it's going to ding us on economy. And yeah. B, we know people are immediately going to go out, gonna change them out and buy something instantly. Else. Yeah, instantly. Smart. And, they know that like, market. Okay, that makes sense. So they can get, so they can tout their MPGs. And they can also, you know, give the market, not charge for something that people aren't going to, you know, want. Because yeah. uh, some people are very particular about which off-road tires they wear, you know? It's, yeah, that's totally. Makes sense. Totally. So, yeah, those three trims, the base trims. What, what is it tow, dude? Oh, uh, 6,000 pounds. So it's actually down from the full-size one because the full-size one was slightly over 8,000 pounds. Yeah. But it was a V8 full-size vehicle. That yeah, sense. okay. Again, if you want to tow more, you get a Sequoia, according to Toyota's. Yeah, project. right. Um, yeah. And I see, I was just talking with another journalist on Twitter yesterday about it. And she was saying that she's like seen no Sequoias anywhere. She lives back East and like here in the Northwest, like everybody's buying Sequoias. Dude, there aren't and any it, here. 
I mean, I'm in None? San Francisco. You're in the Northwest. It's very rare I see sequoias. I see, you know what I am seeing a lot of are the mm. uh, the Grand Highlanders. I just saw my first one here yesterday, actually. I've seen in, like in the four wild. of them. And, I, and when I first saw it, I was like, what the hell is that? You know, I, I don't know what has happened with Toyota, but my God, they are doing a great job. Like that Grand Highlander, I thought, oh, it's a bigger Highlander. This is going to be boring and big. And I'm, I drove it. I'm it's like, nice. this is the best three row on the planet. And it comes it's, down to that hybrid powertrain. And it's like, it's really it's good. good. <laughs> it's, it's really, really good. good, man. Like, I'm, I'll tell you, I'm interested in this Land Cruiser for the simple fact that, I mean, you know me, I've got three SUVs that are older than dirt, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because having three SUVs, that's, a, that's an intelligent thing to do. Yeah, of course. You know, of course. We all know yeah. I, I make wonderful automotive decisions. Um, but I am... I keep thinking about it. Like my Bronco, listen, my, my two SUVs have a combined age of about 55 years old. Yeah, Mike, what you're waiting for is actually what is coming up next. And that is Which probably is... the new Forerunner. And the mm. Forerunner, and I say this because knowing you, so <laughs> when, when we saw the Tacoma, the Tacoma has an option for a four-cylinder with a manual transmission. The yeah. new Forerunner is basically going to be the Tacoma in SUV form, which oh. uh, to fix things here or to clarify some things here, the way Toyota does their their bodies and all that yeah. stuff, the Tacoma, the Tundra, yep. the Land Cruiser, the GX, those are all the TNGAF platform. They're all the same platform. Yeah. Um, and so, but the powertrain wise, the Tacoma and the Forerunner have been always more closely aligned. Uh, so I would be shocked if they don't offer all of the Tacoma powertrains yeah. in an SUV body with the new Forerunner, and that yeah. means that you will have an option if they do this. Yeah, it's really down to their product planning. They have the ability to do it, but whether they choose to do it or not uh, is to offer that four uh, four cylinder motor, manual transmission. Yeah, Forerunner for probably like mid thirties. Perfect. That That's be, my truck. Yep. That's my truck. Exactly. Exactly. So looking forward to that. But uh, we're not going to see an announcement on the Forerunner. I don't have an invite yet. And they usually send out those invites at least like one to two months in advance. Yeah. So probably won't see it until around Christmas time. Uh, yeah. And then it'll probably go into production after that. And the Forerunner is a big deal for Toyota. They sell like a quarter million of those in the U.S. alone. Oh, dude, they're year. crazy. That's they're what everywhere. I see. Like in the Bay Area, you see oh, tacos yeah. and official, you see Forerunners. It's the official vehicle everywhere. West Coast. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And having owned one, I owned a Forerunner, a 2021 TRD off road. I love that thing. It was great. Um, yeah. But, you know, I test cars. So I right. had to get something else. <laughs> right. But I'm so looking dude, forward we, to we, it. We got about two minutes left before we got to we got to bounce. Um, yep. Final thoughts on this thing for the public. Um, will it be a success? Will you think the, the people will be, be a little trepidation? Yeah. It'll be I think huge. a lot of a lot of people that, um, want the off-road capability of the forerunner but want something a little bit nicer with a little more cachet as well too um i yeah. think the four the the new land cruiser is very well positioned a lot of the the faithful will poo poo it and that's fine um there's right. a larger audience to be had there personally i'm hoping i can get my claws into a uh first edition for my own use mm -hmm. uh but you know with limited production even being a youtuber it doesn't really yeah it's hard the line so we'll see we'll see what happens uh, All right. right now I'm waiting for my Ranger Raptor to arrive. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, and there we go. So folks, there you go. Uh, you know, Mr. Douthit's uh, information as always on some of the newest SUVs and off-roaders, you know, this episode was land cruiser based. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking forward to seeing this thing in person. Um, like I said, I'm kind of in the market for something replacing uh, my old yeah. stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, as this is the hot rod barbecue on Hemmings, obviously if you do need your used, Forerunner, Land Cruiser, anything, go to our class. Get an old Land Cruiser, dude. Get an old amazing. one. Amazing. And you know it'll run for... forever. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, but check out the classifieds. Check out the auctions, the make offer pages, and so on. And, uh, Ryan, thank you, as always, for coming on. Always great, um, And, uh, folks, that's it. We'll see you next episode on the Hot Rod Barbecue. Bye. Thanks for listening, folks. And, again, please subscribe to the Hot Rod Barbecue podcast. If you're on Spotify, check us out there. Subscribe to it on iTunes. And if you are going to go to YouTube, make sure you go to the Hot Rod Barbecue Podcast and uh, hit that subscribe button and we'll come to you every week.